Executive recruiting consultants can help your team grow. Finding a new employee can be time-consuming and difficult. Make the process easier by contacting the professionals at Executive Recruiting Consultants. They can find the right person for you. They specialize in the agriculture, banking, accounting, and manufacturing fields, but they can help you no matter what position you're looking to fill. They are the largest non-franchise search firm in South Dakota, and they are ready to go to work for you. Go to ERCjobs.com to get started. That's ERCjobs.com. Welcome to week two of the Coach Pete Schmidt Show here on Big Sue Media, sponsored by ERC. Coach, thank you for joining us again this week. You bet, Lee. So we start off probably not the way you won to start the season 0-2, so let's go back to Friday night's game against Old Hammer Mona Rutland. Three really good quarters, just one little lull in there in the fourth quarter, and Old Hammer Mona Rutland was able to take advantage of that. You know, we didn't shoot very well. We shot 28%. I think uh, it was the first start for uh, <clears throat> three different players, uh, and we're young and inexperienced, and, uh, you know, they played well. Hats off to them. They really, you guys got early foul trouble for Max, and they were able to capitalize inside on that. Is that something that worries you as the season goes on, that you don't have that post to come off to help spell Max? Well, I think that, um, you know, it was unfortunate he got two fouls right away. But that's how you develop kids coming off the bench, and eventually you're going to need that. I think that uh, um, you know you can take a negative situation and turn it into a positive. And uh, so Ryan Einig came in and did some good things, and uh, uh, Thomas Einig played in that spot. You can Garrett. So uh, uh, yeah, I think up the road is going to help us. You talked about shooting woes. Your freshman backcourt struggled from beyond the arc. Do you, do you cause that up, especially Connor Kangas in his first start? Is that just nerves and trying to do too much? What, what did you say to him? What do you do now from here on that? Well, you know, from the first game to the second game, he really did a great job. He, uh, you know, your first start, you never know what to expect. And, uh, you know, it's normal to panic, and I think he did a little bit from time to time. But boy, he sure played well against the best team in the state. Uh, you know, he's the same person and no practice. We played in a Friday night against ORR, turned around and played Monday, uh, and he did a good job. I mean, he made good choices. So you come off that loss, you, like you said, you don't get a practice. The number one team in the state walks into your gym, and you're right with them the first half. You had to be really happy with the way that your team played. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> we talk about it a good measuring stick of where we're at, where we want to go, because they're really the gold standard, I think, in the state. Um, so uh, we were happy with the way things went. Uh, you always want to come out of there with a win, but, you know, they're really an outstanding team, and they've got good guard play, good post, deep bench. Um, and so uh, I was really proud of our kids in that they didn't back down one bit. And defensively, you guys played very well in that first half, and you really played well in the fourth quarter, too, which kind of got you guys back into the game. It was that third quarter lull at about the 6.68 mark. They went on a 20-4 to run, and it just kind of looked like panic had kind of set in a little bit. That's true, but I think, you know, the thing I liked about it was that we didn't back off and, and, and roll over dead. We came back, cut the gap a little bit, even late in the game. I mean, our, our fans were excited. They missed a dunk. We came down and hit a three. Um, so we, uh, you know, didn't back down, and that's a sign of a, that's a good sign. Something for you guys to build on as well. That fourth quarter, you made that little run, kind of cut it down. You know, what? when there's no really moral victories when you only play 20 games and every game's important. But the progression from Friday to Monday had to be positive and had to be pleasant for you. And, you know, our schedule a little tougher this year. Um, 
you know, you start off with uh, you're at ORR, which is a tough place to play. Then you play the number one team in the state at home. Then you're on the road for a game. And then you've got DeSmet, who's really good coming in here. And then you go to a Class A team, McCook Central. So um, the first part of the schedule is pretty tough. Um, and then as we progress, you know, there are, there are some other teams that are good. Parker, Canastota. Um, so we have to come to play every night. So you've now you played Monday. You've had a few practices leading up to Friday's game against Esteline. What's been the focus here these past few practices? Well, it's amazing. You know, we're Thursday. I think two days ago we had, uh, you know, a third of our team was either ill, uh, struggling with academics, or injured. So we had 12 players of our 18. Uh, now tonight everybody's there and uh, feeling a little better about that. Uh, Luke Brown was injured. Uh, had an ankle injury in the Bridgewater game. Um, you know, we kind of got back to, hey, let's take what we have and make it better. We're not going to throw too many new things at them, but let's just clean up those errors we're making with, um, you know, obviously in the first game was uh, baseline dribbling, uh, giving up the baseline scores, and then also rebounding. So we've been working, you know, working on that. Uh, and then just trying to make the other stuff that we have in our in our uh, <clears throat> work belt, so to speak. The tools we've got in there, just sharpen them. You guys have done a lot of pressing. You did a lot of pressing against Old Hammer, Mono, Rutland, and you did a little bit of some token pressing, kind of got you back in Tuesday night. That full court press, we talked about it last week. How do you feel right now about your full court press as you're putting these new players in and putting this new philosophy in? Again, we have to do a better job in our box press of pressuring the ball. And we emphasized that. We showed that on our videotape. Um, this is where you're at, and this is where you need to go. And then we're still learning uh, what we're trying to do in our full court press. So it's a process. And uh, I think we've got the kids to press. We've got some depth. And uh, we just need to get better at you know the tools in that within that framework. Our uh, pressing team is... Uh, Obviously, you got to be in better shape, and we feel like we are. You know, one week in three makes a big difference. Um, you know, that one extra week that you've got, instead of having two weeks of conditioning, we're now at re week three. So uh, that's going to help you, too. Post play is such an important part of this game. The game has kind of gotten away from it. It used to always be, let's get post touches and then kick out, play inside out. Seems a little bit more teams have started to go from inside, outside in, excuse me. Where's the philosophy right now on getting post touches and getting the ball inside a little bit? Well, we have a pretty good post player in Max Herber, so we want to get him touches. There's no question about it. I think in the OR game, he got two. And in, uh, the next game, he got more. So we we're happy about that. We just know that... You know, if you're going to be uh, successful, you got to have an inside game as well as an outside game. Um, you know, I'm kind of old school. I think you got to have some guys that play with their back to the basket. And uh, in the offense we run, we're going to screen with those guys and try to get them the ball. And, uh, you know, that makes for better teamwork, too. If, you, if they know they're going to get the ball, we're not just shooting threes. Um, you know, they're going to play hard to work to get the ball. You guys have a lot of speed with Connor and Connor in that backcourt, and even Luke when Luke's ankle's healthy. Mm -hmm. You guys have a lot of speed. You haven't had a chance to get out and run really against the, either one of these teams. Is that something that you need to work on as the year gets going, try and get those quick, easy baskets? Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, first of all, we played a couple of smaller gyms, our own in Oldham, Rutland Ramona's, the Rambler Dome. So S-Line's going to be bigger. Um, a Cook Central's gym is going to be bigger. And, uh, you know, the bigger the floor, I think, the more advantage you have when you're us because we're going to get out there and sprint. Um, that said, we're always trying to push the ball. It's fun to play. It's fun to watch and turn around and transition and press on defense. Players like it. Fans like it. I mean, it puts the ball back in the player's hands, too, as a coach. You know, you go three on two, we can't draw anything up. You know, we could teach them, but they ultimately make the choices. 
You talked about Luke's ankle from Monday night. Where is he at health-wise with that ankle? I think he'll be ready to go. Uh, tonight he practiced for the first time, and uh, we taped him up pretty good. And uh, I think he'll be ready to go Friday night. That is the review of last week. We're going to come back here quickly. We're going to do a little coach talk on the board with Coach Coach Peach Schmidt here on Big Sioux Media. Back here on the Peach Schmidt Show here on Big Sioux Media, sponsored by ERC. We're going to talk a little bit here, Coach, about the box zone and the full court box press, what that does for you guys. Okay. So basically, call it the box press because two, two, one. Okay. The idea behind it is that uh, the ball's inbounded here. This guy's got it. He's going to pressure, force this guy to dribble sideline. This guy's going to come over and set a trap. I do a trap areas right in here. This guy will shift. This guy will shift to here. So what you've got is two guys trapping here, and, and two guys are now here. And the box stays the same. And it's, uh, uh, compared to the diamond press, it's a little bit uh, uh, easier to run. You don't get as many steals, but you don't give up as many easy baskets either. So we've, we've done that the last few years. So when you run it to here, what's the advantage of trapping it here instead of trapping it here when they get past and you can have another defender there? It's hard to get a trap right here, but ideally, uh, obviously, that's better because they pick it up here. Um, you know, they're past the timeline, they can't go mm -hmm. backwards. Uh, but uh, you'd have your post player, this guy right out here, coming with a, a forward, trapping that right in here. And then everybody retreats to the basket. We don't get many of those, we try to, but uh, a throw over the top. I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but here's what we'll do. Give us a new little look here. So what he's talking about here is trapping with the post player who's come up and a forward who's come over and right here. Then what happens is all these players flood to the lane. Now what we have done, and it's hard to do I think, uh, we go man to man out of that. We just say, hey, you get once they get into this uh, area right in here, you're going to find a man and stand him. And it might be a mismatch. But uh, we just feel like we have to pressure out of a man to man. So we're trying to get the best of both worlds. Not give up easy baskets, pressure the ball, get steals, come down here, pressure the ball some more, and man to man. One of the things that most coaches will tell their kids is, you know, we're going to try and pass back, get back to the middle, stay out of here. Mm -hmm. How important is this, this backside guard then to get back? to make sure that that pass isn't made. Okay, so what you're talking about here is this. Um, let's just say the ball's here again, there. I trap set there. Quickly get us a cord here. Here's a look right here. So there's your box press again. We always teach that they throw it back to the inbounder and then they have another guy over here we still want to force all the action around the outside. If they get in the middle, we're on a dead sprint because it's broken. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep the ball in the middle. Okay? And as you saw when we set up here earlier, we had court back up here. Uh, we had, uh, if this is the rim line, that is the rim here and here. We have four players, actually five players on that side of the court. And then we're just repositioning. And we always talk about stealing off the pass, not the dribble. And why is that? Well, you'll get fouls, first of all. Um, and we feel like when the ball is in flight, that's the time to go get it. Versus you're reaching fouls. You don't get many steals off the dribble unless they're really poor ball handlers, but you'll get them off the pass, okay? And uh, we actually had a kid one year that he would steal the ball. He'd be dribbling up it here, and they'd try to pass it over. He'd just jump up and get it. Good leaper, good athlete. He'd just jump up and grab it. And that's hard to do. You guys throwing it. He just jumps up and grabs the thing. But for the most part, we're going to get it off that. And then later on, we're banking that in the game, 
they're going to get tired, they're going to turn it over more. So you might not yield any turnovers early, but later on, when they're tired, get careless, throw it away. When you look at that, that's the defense side of it. Let's flip it to the other side. As an offense, when you start to see teams press and putting pressure on your guards, your guards are quick and are pretty good ball handlers. What are you telling Connor and Connor and Luke when they get that ball and you're starting to see a press? Um, we always teach this. The first thing we're going to do is have our four-man take it out, hit our one man who is, let's say they make a basket. We call it a sweep. They sweep under the basket, hit one, get to the middle of the floor, uh, two and three. Try to make ourselves a court again here. Two and three have run the floor, and we're going to try and beat it. Uh, if people press us, we're going to try to convert. I saw Bridgewater press us a little bit the other day, but they backed out of it. It was just really token. It was they yeah. tried to keep the ball out of Connor's hands, right. but then they would retreat once it was. Right. So basically, uh, that's what we would do initially, and then we do have. I should probably be showing all these secrets, <laughs> but we do have a press breaker for a man to man. That involves screening, and then we also have a press breaker if somebody box presses us, okay, how to get the ball to the middle or up the sideline into the middle. I think whenever you get in the box press, if you get the ball here, that's kind of what you want to look like. You want to attack it, kind of similar to the game of hockey where what they do is they try to center the puck on a <coughs> center ice, get the ball, the shooters, and fire on goal. So the key is, and against this box press, is when you're running it, you want to push the ball to the sidelines. When it's being run against it, you want to find the middle. Right, right. And, um, you know, you can throw it over the top. But I think you throw it over the top, you, you, you know, the ball is waiting. If we're uh, offensively, this is a great basketball skill. If the ball, if you're here and the ball's coming to you, you're going to run through the ball with your hands. You're going to run through. We talk about that a lot where you're not waiting for the ball to get there, then they get there and steal it, run through the ball. And that's a great tip for youth coaches and for youth players, that when you're coming for a pass and it's a long pass to come running through the ball. We want to thank the coach this week. We want to thank the Chalk Talk. And we want to thank you for watching. We'll be back next week. We'll discuss Esteline and the DeSmith game next week. Thank you for joining us.